Hello, we are doing lesson 10.1 today. Uh, it's going to be on geometric formulas for circles, so looking at the area and the circumference of a circle. So first we're going to look at the parts of a circle. The arrow that's pointing to the middle, we just call that the center of the circle. And going out the red line we have here, anywhere from the edge of the circle to the middle, it doesn't matter where it is, all of them we would call a radius. R-A-D-I-U-S, I can't spell. There we go. And this, uh, any length that goes directly through the center of the circle, we call a diameter. All right, and then we have two formulas for a circle. Uh, the first one is if we were looking for the area of a circle. So if I wanted to like paint this whole circle in, the area of the circle, our formula is pi times radius squared. And pi, remember, is a button on your calculator, but it's also the number 3.14. And if you want to know why we use that symbol or why we call it pi, let me know and I can explain it to you, but I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, so that will give us the area of a circle if we use that formula. And the other formula is for the circumference of a circle. Uh, circumference is the distance around the edge of the circle, similar to a perimeter, but for a circle we call it circumference. And our circumference is the formula pi times diameter. Some people like to use the formula 2 times pi times radius because two radiuses, 2 times the radius is a diameter because the radius is halfway to the middle or to the middle. The diameter is both, all the way across, like two radiuses is the same as a diameter. So I'm going to use pi times diameter. If you use 2 pi r, 2 times radius, you'll get the same answer. So let's take a look at this circle. We're going to find the circumference in the area. So circumference is pi times diameter. And we know the radius here is 50, so the diameter all the way across would be 100. So pi times the diameter of 100, and I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. If you want to use the pi button on your calculator, it's the fourth one down on the left, you can. So 3.14 times 100, some of you could already predict, that answer is going to be 314. And we're talking about yards, so the circumference I was going to walk around the edge of this, this is a crop circle or in a cornfield, um, it would be 314 yards if we went the distance all the way around. And they're also asking us to find the area. Area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So we have pi times our radius, which is 50, so 50 squared. Remember, order of operations, we need to do our exponent first. Unless you're just plugging it all in your calculator, your calculator will know to do the exponent. And you can use the x squared button on your calculator to get to the power of 2. Otherwise, 50 squared is 50 times 50, and then multiply by pi, 3.14. And we get an area of 7,850, and we would have yards squared for area because it's two dimensions. We would be like filling in or looking at the area of the entire circle. Alright, next to area of this crop circle, this one's a really cool design, pi r squared. And our radius, we don't know, we know our diameter is 80. Our radius is half of that, which would be 40. So we have pi times 40 to the power of 2. So I'm just going to plug that in my calculator. 40 squared, or 40 times 40, times pi, 3.14. And we get an area of 5,024 meters squared for area, because it's two-dimensional. And circumference is pi times the diameter. And our diameter, they already told us, was 80. So we just have pi times 80. I think the hardest part for some people is just knowing which formula to use. However, you can use your formula sheet uh, on your MCA test, 
you just need to know how to use the formulas. Oops. So our answer when we multiply those, we get 251.2, and we're talking about meters. Just meters because circumference is just the distance around the edge of our circle. If we were going to go for a walk, that's how many meters we would walk around the edge. All right, next, this circle, just to be careful here, the 25 centimeters, the line goes all the way across, so that's our diameter is 25. If we need our radius then, our radius is half of the diameter, uh, and our radius would be like 12.5, because that's half of the diameter. Pi r squared, the r squared, remember, that's the formula for area, because we're looking at two dimensions. So we really have pi times 12.5 squared to find our area. So 12.5 squared times 12.5 squared times, not squared, just 12.5 times 12.5, times 3.4, 3.14. Man, I'm struggling. Gives us 490. 0.625, and I'm just going to round that to 0.63, and we're talking about centimeters squared. That would be the area of the flat face of the clock. And then our circumference is pi times diameter, so pi times 25 gives us 78.5, and we're talking about centimeters. That's how many centimeters, or how much, would be right around the outside edge. On the back side, we have two, mul uh, not multiple choice, word problems <clears throat> to solve. It says, the top face of a hockey puck is a circle with a 1.5 inch radius. What is the area and the circumference of the top face of the hockey puck? Well, a hockey puck is a circle, like it says, so I'm just going to draw it. It has a 1.5 inch radius. They want us to find the area and the circumference. So our formulas, area is pi times radius squared, circumference is pi times diameter, and remember I'm using 3.14 for pi. If you want to use the pi button, that's okay. So first area pi times our radius, 1.5 squared. So I'm going to plug this in my calculator, 1.5 times 1.5 times 3.14 gives us an area of 7.065, which I would round to 7.07, .07. and we're talking about inches squared. So that's how much rubber we would need for the top face of the hockey puck, that many inches squared. And then for our circumference, the distance around the edge of the circle, pi times our diameter. Well, if our radius is 1.5, the diameter all the way across would be 3. So you could already predict what our answer is going to be close to. If we have 3.14 times 3, we already know 3, point, or 3 times 3 is 9. So we get an, a circumference of 9.42. And that makes sense because we're really close to just 3 times 3. Uh, and we're talking about inches. So distance around the edge of the circle. All right, this last one is more of an application type problem. I would like for you to try and find this one first, and then we'll do this part together. So it says a giant unicycle wheel has a diameter of 7 feet. I'm going to draw a circle. The diameter is 7 feet. That is huge. Look at this guy. What is the circumference of the wheel? Circumference is pi times diameter. And guess what? They already gave us a diameter. So this one was a little easy. Pi times 7, or 3.14 times 7. My calculator's doing very crazy things. We get 21.98, and we're talking about feet. So the distance around the edge of this, like the rubber needed to make the wheel, would be a distance of 21.98 feet. 
So now they want to know, how many rotations does it take for the wheel to travel 176 feet? Well, we know each one is about 22 feet. It's really not 22, it's 21.98. So we could take our total, 176, and just divide by 21.98 to see how many rotations could we make to go that distance. So 176 divided by 21.98 is an answer of 8.00 or zero, zero, 001 if we round it. So it would be about eight rotations. We would only need to go around or take the wheel around eight times in order to go that far. Alright, your homework is the 10.1 worksheet looking at area and circumference.